Welcome back to the Project Wealthy Power Video Series. Today, we're gonna learn how to make a Photoshop box. This is the final results, and I'm gonna take you guys step by step on how to get there with using Photoshop and a few quick tricks and tips that I'm gonna show you. So, very important, we need to make sure that we have the front of our box designed. We're gonna take one of the boxes from the actual Project Wealthy Series to work with, and we're also gonna need the side of the box. So hopefully you've prepared both of these before you start following along with this tutorial. And I'm not going to give you guys uh, step-by-steps by using these drop downs up here. I'm gonna use shortcuts and announce the shortcuts I'm using to make this happen faster. So everything here is still layered. So what we'll need to do is flatten these images to make sure that they are actually one single layer. So I'm gonna flatten this guy, I'm gonna flatten this guy, which you're not seeing over there, but that's okay. We're gonna bring both of our pieces into this canvas. We're gonna line them up. Uh, if you hold down Control and Shift and click both of these graphics, you'll notice that, that they are now grouped. Control T brings up your nodes to scale this, so we're gonna scale it down a little bit. Maybe that's a little too much. Eh, right about there. Okay, here's where the fun part comes in. Ungroup them. And one thing I'm actually forgetting here is this top piece, which we'll worry about later. Uh, you can design it freely like you have over here, or you can add it later, which I'm going to do. So what we need to remember is, actually, I'm going to make this it canvas size a bit bigger, so we have more room to work with. Okay, what we need to remember is this is going to have a reflection. This is going to have shadows and it's all in Photoshop, not using a 3D program, so we want to make it look as real as possible. So again, Control T brings up your nodes. This allows you to grab any node and do whatever you want with it. Up, down, you can actually even grab one of these nodes down here, holding down Control and Shift, you can make it really wonky. Okay, very untraditional, but what we'll do is simply give it a little bit of a skew, angled upwards, bring this guy down a little bit, and bring this guy up a little bit. Okay, starting to take shape. Now we're gonna take the side of our box. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring it in a little bit and bring it up a little bit so that you notice there's a 45 degree angle or close to it anyway. And up here, bring this down a little bit. You probably will have to understand and know how 3D works at least a touch or get a box that you have in your house and set it up at the exact same angle you want your box to look like and start working with it. So once you have things in place as you want them to get rid of the nose just press enter we have uh, a box starting to take shape what we'll do is holding down control click on this layer holding down alt click hold and drag you are now making a copy now what I'm gonna do is flip this vertically I'm going to bring down edge to edge here control T once again and the same thing we did up here we're gonna do down here but the reverse so I'm going to bring this right up there we go same thing over here, we're gonna copy this, we're gonna flip it, we're gonna bring it down edge to edge. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to make final little adjustments instead of just the mouse, and control T and bring this up to its edge. So now we have a reflection, and what we'll need to do is group this and this, holding down control and shift, click on both of these, and we're going to control E which merges those two layers together. So now we don't need to worry about them being grouped by holding down Control and Shift because they're already grouped together. I'm gonna take my eraser. Actually, I'm gonna grab everything for a second and move it up. We probably won't need at least the bottom half. And now we are going to get our eraser tool, which is accessed by just pressing E. And we're going to erase a nice gradual fade. And on top of that, we're now going to use the numeric keypad on the right of your keyboard. If you press zero, that makes it 100% transparent. If you press one, that's 10%, two, 20%, three, 30%, and so on. So we're gonna leave it at about five, let's say six. Okay, oops, grab everything again, bring it down. And now we go to the bottom layer, make a new layer, simply make a black, box and what we're gonna do with this box should bring it up to the top layer so you see what's going on we are going to make our shadow and the way shadows are made is well by light obviously but what you'll need to know is angles if this angle is the bottom 
of this box, this angle of the shadow should somewhat follow. And if the thickness is from here to here, your shadow should be relatively somewhat the same. And we'll drop it in. We're gonna go up and give this a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. Right there. Also using the numeric keypads, we're gonna bring this down to about three. And we're gonna move it behind all the layers. Okay, we have, actually that's a little too thick still, so two, one, not two, there, that's good. Using your eraser again, a little bit too big, right click, make your eraser smaller, and just give it a little bit of a nice edge here. Okay, so that shadow's done, we're going to keep moving on, create another shadow, make a new layer, new big black box, and this time, we are going to give it the back shadow. Assuming most times uh, your objects are being hit by at least two light points. So we're going to work with two light points. You can have four shadows, you can have one shadow. I like to use two. Control, pressing control F will give it the exact same uh, effect that you've just given it. So we're going to make this Gaussian blur. We're going to bring this down to two. And probably want to adjust it a little bit here and there until you're happy with it. And then again, using your eraser tool, Give it a little bit of a quick touch. Okay, so pretty much most of our box is now starting to take shape. These shadows could be a little bit too wide perhaps, so maybe we can bring them in a little bit. Here we go. The top of this box here is actually very easy. Create yourself a new layer on top of everything else. Uh, using the pen tool, press P. Simply click one, two, three, four. Close it up. It might look a little bit wonky, so using the letter A, which acts as your white pointer, you simply select this node and make your final adjustment to where you think it should be sitting. Once you're happy with the shape and the perspective looks correct, click on your, I'm move this onto the screen, click on paths. Down here you will create marching ants, as we call them, and you will give it a color. Alt and Backspace, or Control and Backspace, will give you your foreground and background color selections and fill in whatever area that you're working with. And now, simply move it into place where you can. Since we've made it white, then black, then back to white, we have an edge here. So I'm going to go back in my history until I just made this into my marching ants. Give it black one more time, and then click away. There we go. As a final step, what you'll want to remember is light hits this from various ways and it casts shadows and it also will cast um, highlights on the actual product. So we want to make sure that every single one of our layers has a lock on the transparency. This means that if I choose a black brush, bring the tools on as well. If I choose this brush, if I choose black, and if I go onto this layer and I start coloring it black, you'll notice that I cannot go outside. Maybe white will be better to show you. I cannot go outside the edges. You see that? That's very, very important. Why? Because what I'll do now is get a big brush and give it a very little highlight on the edge. And that can happen here. That can happen on the top part of the box. That can happen on the side of the box. Assuming you haven't grouped them all together just yet. The only thing you are supposed to group is your reflection. Um, you'll probably want to play with it a little bit. Or again, get a box, set it up. Set up two lights so that you have a similar effect here naturally with the real box. And then you'll be able to duplicate it very easily. So there you go. Now what we'll do is simply group everything together by linking all the layers. And now you can take it, drag it onto other canvases, uh, make it a part of a collection. What I'll show you, we, we've done here. Here's all our boxes into one big graphic, and that's how we did it. We basically took all of our angles, all of our boxes, started duplicating them one by one, and now we have a beautiful set of boxes.